how to do cardio. If you're already an endurance athlete who runs, swims, or bikes long distances, this post really won't apply to you. This is for individuals who are currently sedentary and trying to figure out how much cardio to do to stay healthy. First, it's important to understand that one of the primary benefits of cardiovascular exercise is in improving VO2 max. VO2 max is a measurement of your body's capacity to use oxygen, which depends on how efficiently your heart pumps blood, how well your lungs work, how much hemoglobin you have, the amount of muscle you carry, mitochondrial density, and a bunch of other cellular adaptations that occur in response to increased cardiorespiratory demand. A higher VO2 max has been shown to significantly reduce all-cause mortality. While strength training and steady state cardio, aka endurance, create improvements in VO2 max, the best way to improve it is to train it directly through high intensity efforts using as many muscles at the same time as possible. The prowler, also called the sled, is a time efficient way to improve your VO2 max. It recruits a lot of muscle mass simultaneously and is easily progressed by adding weight. Other ways to improve your VO2 max include doing high intensity intervals like sprinting or HIIT style workouts. While strength training and endurance activities improve VO2 max as well, they aren't focused on training it directly. However, it is important to remember that strength training is a type of interval training, particularly when doing big compound movements like squats, deadlifts, or even chin-ups. In fact, in a substantial minority of the population, strength training alone will improve their VO2 max into a healthy range without ever having to do dedicated cardio. Since you can't know your VO2 max without expensive and or time consuming testing, it is worth simply including dedicated cardio on a regular basis on top of your strength training. So how much cardio should you do? If you meet the minimum American Heart Association recommendations for physical activity, you will probably have a healthy VO2 max. The AHA recommends at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity activity or 75 minutes of vigorous intensity activity per week. To get a more objective assessment of what that means, estimate your maximum heart rate by subtracting your age from 220. So for example, if you're 30 years old, your estimated maximum heart rate would be 190. Moderate intensity activity, like brisk walking, means keeping your heart rate between 50 to 70% of your estimated maximum, according to the AHA guidelines. Vigorous activity, like running, involves keeping your heart rate between 70 to 85% of your estimated maximum. While you will receive even more benefit by exceeding these guidelines, they are a useful starting point. Keep in mind that we aren't doing cardio to burn as many calories as possible. That idea is based on the faulty notion that you can offset excessive calories by simply burning them off. The number of calories burned through exercise is modest unless you're a competitive athlete training for hours a day. The required calorie deficit for losing body fat is going to be created primarily by diet and secondarily through activity. The real reason to do cardio is to train your heart, lungs, and metabolic capacity, which results in an improvement in your VO2 max. And an improved VO2 max means you are less likely to die prematurely from preventable causes. So what are my recommendations? How do I program cardio and see its role in a comprehensive program? As I've mentioned already, effective strength training using heavy compound movements can meet the cardiorespiratory fitness requirements for many people. Not only can a good strength training program create a healthy VO2 max, it also improves body composition, increases bone density, reduces chronic pain, increases flexibility, and makes everything easier. Whereas improvements in cardiorespiratory fitness and VO2 max take place in a matter of a few weeks, strength adaptations take years. That's why I place a comprehensive strength training program right in the center of my program design. It simultaneously improves VO2 max while offering a multitude of other benefits that accrue over time like compounding interest. That being said, I recommend that all my clients engage in regular steady state cardio as well. The rationale for this is not everyone will obtain a healthy VO2 max through strength training alone. Adding 25 to 30 minutes a day of moderate intensity, steady state cardio, i.e. endurance activities, in between strength training workouts can help with recovery. It also trains to more oxidative muscle fiber types in a way that doesn't get trained through strength training alone, resulting in a more robust and comprehensive set of adaptations. Moderate intensity cardio is also less likely to interfere with the adaptations we are trying to create through strength training. But in the long run, you want to include a mix of moderate and vigorous intensity cardio for maximum benefit.